to preach in this uh, national conference. So it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, let me thank the chairperson, the committee, and everyone uh, involved. Uh, like I've come with uh, two of the pastors. Can you hear me from this mic? Are you sure? What about this one? Ah, okay. Did you hear everything I said before this? Some said yes, some said no. So I will just say thank you for this invitation. I feel honored. I believe you had a wonderful time yesterday. You had a wonderful time today. All right. I was saying I've come with two of the pastors in our ministry, uh, Pastor Marcus Daniel and... We are coming from another conference, so let me go straight to the word of God, and then after that, uh, we can be back on our way. I've been invited to teach on the subject of exercising the spirit of excellence. Exercising the spirit of excellence. I haven't come here to give you some things that I googled on internet just before the service. I'm not going to give you things that I just read somewhere, somewhere before the service. This is the life I live. So this is the life I live. I've got results in this field. And I'm sure that you're inviting me because I've got results in this area, isn't it? So as you listen, Listen very, very well. Just on this subject alone, by now I have taught thousands upon thousands on this same subject. Apart from the many other topics that I've taught to different people, but just on this subject of excellence, I have taught thousands upon thousands. And we have a lot of testimonies that have come from those meetings. And I believe you will also go home with your testimony. Excellence. So it's exercising the spirit of excellence. So, tell your neighbor, neighbor. Tell the other neighbor, neighbor, get ready. Focus. Don't miss anything. Oh, yeah. So, excellence, let me start with a simple definition. Excellence is the quality of being outstanding or of being extremely good. So, when we talk of excellence, we mean the quality or the state of being outstanding or of being good. We are talking about a state where you surpass the average. You are not mediocre in your results. No, no, no. The average level is to cloud it. The one that's exercising excellence is the one that says, I will not settle for less. I will not be where everyone is. There is a place at the top. You know, the things that happen at the top are very different from those that happen at the bottom. Do you know that whilst in this economy, many people are complaining and saying, you know, per ground, per foot, per ground, this is what we know. Chan -chan, as they say, the price of water has increased. Some people, they stopped paying for water. Their organization pays for water. So when the water increases or decreases, they don't care. You know that even as it is hot, while some are saying it is hot, if someone is sleeping in an air or room, Probably they're not feeling the same heat that others are feeling. Do you know that once others are saying, talk, get, talk, get, how much is it? 3,000, but others simply don't care because that 3,000 budget is what they use to give someone on the street to buy ice cream. No, so it depends where you are. Are, are you listening? It matters where you stay. For example, if you're in Atlanta, if you stay in places like, now I say this respectfully, if you stay in places like, let's say, Bayani, Bangwedinandi, in Bayani, Bangwedinandi, 
mainland, a tank can blow up. You know, toilets can burst off. And the city assembly, it will take them one month to come and fix it. Musifaku Munka for one month. When the same happens in Nyambarwe, Namiwawa, area 43, it happens in the morning, they fix it by a job. It matters where you stay. So the place, I remember, if you talk about academics, I remember there was a time that I was in school and my fellow students called for a meeting and they said everyone should attend. So I said, what's the meeting for? And I, now let me know if this one is picking up. Oh, it's just a recorder. Oh, you should have told me. So, uh, they called me to a meeting and said, we are all complaining that the exam was very tough. So we all want to approach the teacher and say that they should give us another exam or we should approach the authorities. So I asked, the, the people speech exam. <laughs> so the one told me the that exam that was very difficult. Which one? <laughs> so the one that all of us have failed. I said, there is an exam that everyone has failed. Because I had received my exam sheets and I did see everything that I did. Actually, I put in an average of a distinction. So I was wondering that so some people failed. They said, that exam people failed. I said, oh, I didn't know. It matters where you stay. I said, it matters where you stay. So I want to talk about this amazing subject on the spirit of excellence. Now, before we even go far, there is something about excellence that the Bible shows us from Daniel chapter number 6 and verse 3. Daniel chapter number 6 and verse 3. The Bible tells us from Daniel chapter number 6 and verse 3. The Bible says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. So the Bible is telling us that in Daniel was found what? An excellent spirit. And the Bible tells us something that the excellent spirit does to you. He says that, and the king thought to send him over the whole realm. So he says, Daniel was found an excellent spirit. And there is something peculiar about an excellent spirit. Whenever you have an excellent spirit, you don't just have it. Or when you have, when you have excellence in your academics, in your family, in your finances, or anywhere, you cannot just have excellence and be like everyone else. Uh -huh. And this 
is the same thing that excellence does. So look at it. Hey. Look at it like this. Here I am. Let's say I am a new student. Oh, there is a club on campus, drama club, chess, or whatever. And they are looking for a few people. And I am a new student on that campus. Oh, they are looking for people that should represent school. Or whatever people are looking for. And it appears as though that the house is for this. So you are here. And it appears as though all positions have been taken. This one has already become number one. This one number two. This one number three. The receiving door is closed. And you are there. The Bible says, a man's gift, number one, makes room for him. So there is no room. So there is no room here. But it says, a man's gift, if you have that gift, if you have excellence, the same way it happened with Daniel. Daniel went into captivity. When he went to, he took captivity in Babylon with the Nebuchadnezzar. There were already people that had top positions, isn't it? People were already in government. And Daniel, someone that was coming as a prisoner, you cannot come as a prisoner and become the boss. Did you become the boss? The same with Joseph. Joseph went to Egypt. Joseph was a prisoner. But, ladies and gentlemen, in Egypt, there was no position of prime minister. But, hey, there was no position of prime minister. But, the came a time that Pharaoh dreamt and the dream price. And they said, who can interpret this? Let's call the magicians, they failed. Let's call the wise men, they failed. Let's call this one, they failed. Then they said, who shall we call? That's where excellence comes in. People are always looking for that excellent person. Because it's what tells us. People always come to a point where they don't know who can help. Do you know what I mean when it comes to marriage? It's the same one. Yeah, it's the same one. Yes. Mm. You know, people are thinking, people are thinking that good men are no longer there. No, no, no. no. They are there. People are thinking that good ladies are no longer there. No more single good ladies. Ah, ah, they are still there. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You may just not have attained the level of the person that they are looking for. So they, yeah, they have this standard to say, I am looking for somebody, and that someone may not be you. So, someone says, She does not have so on. All organizations are friendly. No!
One of the easiest things to do, one of the easiest things to do is to identify problems. Problems are very easy to, to identify. It is solutions that are difficult to identify. So, Joseph came and he said, number one, there is a problem. Number two, this is a solution. And then he told them, he said, find a man. Joseph didn't even say, get me. Uh -huh. He said, find a man that can do A, B, C, D. Pharaoh oh, looked at Joseph. He said, Joseph, there is no man here. No man.
You know, in, when I was in my second year in university, that's when I got to encounter God in a way that would get me to become born again. And then from there, I began to diligently study the word, to pray, and all of this. And one of the things that I found out from the Bible is that I could move, I could move in a life of excellence. So I was a student, and therefore, academics mattered for me. So in my prayer, study of the word, I would ask myself and search in scripture that can go and help someone in their academics, and I found out yes. I studied all it well, I prayed on it, I found the principles, so there are principles, and I'll share with you one or two today. I studied the principles, and when I, when I got a hold of the principles, I went to my roommate, and I announced, I said, my roommate, with what I have found out, I cannot get less than a distinction on this campus. He looked at me and he laughed. I said, you haven't heard the rest of the story. <laughs> Even in my class, I will start getting awards. Because during our time, I think it still happens, there will be CGH, Total, and other organizations that will come and give us money. So if you are talking in class, they will give you money. At that time, they will give us 100,000. And it was a lot. You, these allowances you receive now, some of you, the allowances you receive in your school is how much? Is it that? Rick. 
with it are suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who has called us the agent he says to glory and virtue but the amplifier says to glory and excellence if what the Bible uses as virtue is the same way that can be translated excellence so the Bible is telling us that God has called us both to glory and to excellence. In other words, different from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, there will be some that will have the spirit of excellence. For example, the scripture we read, the Bible said that in Daniel was found the spirit of excellence. So there will be some that will have the spirit of excellence and some that will not have it. Very from the New Testament. The New Testament, when you are getting born again, you are born with the spirit of excellence. In the New Testament, there are several things that are already given to you at the point of getting born again. For example, faith. Every Christian has faith. It just differs how much faith you have. The Bible says they have dealt with us the measure of faith. Every Christian has love. The, the Bible says that the Spirit has uh, shed abroad his love in us. Every Christian has faith, has love, has peace, has joy, has self-control, has all of this. And the same way, you also have excellence. So if you are born again, you have do I have people that are born again here? I believe all of you, isn't it? They say I've got the spirit of excellence. Say I am excellent. Say that again, I am excellent. So the Bible says he has given to us both glory and virtue or excellence. Now this is where the difference now comes in. This is where the difference now comes in. Every baby, every child, is born every normal baby. Maybe let me put it that way. Every normal baby is born with the ability to talk, to walk, to hear, to see, and to all of this. So a baby is born with that ability. But the ability of a baby to talk will not manifest on its own. The baby must train it or must develop it. That's why all of you, if you have ever met a baby, you go to a baby and say, Ga ga. The baby says, Ga ga. Say, Da da. The baby says, Da da. Uncle. 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 You know, it goes like that, isn't it? The same way that walking, the baby doesn't just start with walking, but it's a Inside the baby is already the nature of walking. But the baby at first will not walk. Then the baby begins to train how to walk. Then you start to train the baby. Then the baby falls down. When the father is a stupid baby, now go ahead. You will never walk in life. Uh -uh. You will encourage the baby to wake up, isn't it? The baby what? Wakes up. Try it again. Without knowing how to talk. 
You are sitting after all in heaven. There is no school. You are very correct. Because in heaven, there is also not eating. Mm. Mm. So if you think school is not important, you might as well stop eating as well. Yeah, you can as well stop many other things, isn't it? Yes. Even in heaven, there is no money. So don't think of one ticket in mind. Hmm. Even as a student, when you are getting good grades, people always come to you. 
and they ask you, hey, brother, what is your secret? What makes you pass? And you say, don't worry, I can explain to you my secret. Can we please meet somewhere and then you meet? You say, I've got, I've got a secret. Do you have a pen and a paper? They say, yes, yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Pick a secret. You tell them, write it your notes. My secret number one is G and the right G. O and the right O. This is it must be capital letters, eh? G O then what? D. So that is my number one secret. I will tell you, if you have got the results, they will be saying. Then you tell them number one, okay, again. They will be listening. Number two, do this, they will be listening. Why your great grace always catches the attention of people. So you must do well in life. Whatever you're doing, well, it will always catch the attention of people. The Bible says to your faith and what? Excellence. Then the Bible says to excellence. What should you add to excellence? He says, add to virtue. And what? Add knowledge. So he says to virtue. Add knowledge. Knowledge is one of the key principles that separates great achievers and mediocre achievers. Knowledge, knowledge is very powerful. Many Christians don't respect the place of knowledge. Information is very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever you want to achieve in, whatever you want to do very well, there is always a place for information, always a place for knowledge. If you want to do well in your spiritual life, there is a place for knowledge. If you want to do well in your academic, there is a place for knowledge. If you want to do well in your finances, there is a place for knowledge. But, can I go a bit faster? Well, I'm already going too fast. I'm already going too fast. Alright, I've got several things to explain within the short time, so allow me to go a bit faster. So, I, I want you to say, there is knowledge, and knowledge is very, very important. But, there has been a great debate as to which knowledge becomes important to be a great achiever or which knowledge becomes very important to be a man of excellence. So on one hand, there are the spiritual people, pastors like me, and other spiritual people. They say, you know, if you want excellence and you want to be a great achiever in life, all you need is to know about God. Know about God, know about Jesus, know about the Holy Ghost, know prayer, study the Bible, and spiritual books. That's all. You do that, there will be excellence. And then they even add the pattern, the knockout part. Life is spiritual. If you want to be great, just focus on the spiritual. You want to be rich, the spiritual. You want to be number one in class, the spiritual. And some of those are the ones that when exams are the next day, they go to, to the mountain today and sit at the mountain. Thank you. 
learning. You are one of those that easily get victimized in school. Because whenever you are studying, even in the library, there are sitting men. What do I bring to your home? I would read their books. 
I've learned a lot from many people without meeting them. That's Amen. what you do. Invest in knowledge. Read your Bible very well. The Bible also has a lot of spiritual principles. The Bible has mysteries. The Bible has keys. When you get a hold of those and use them, you will be amazed what can happen in your lives. Invest in knowledge. And one of those important ways to do that is to manage your time. Because if you want to invest in knowledge, it will demand your time, isn't it? You cannot have time to read things if all your time is used on movies, chatting, you know, just walking around. You are in a relationship on campus, you just chat the whole day. She was a woman that, hey, Madam Punoga. So only those two. 